Well, I'm excited about what God's doing. Amen? Amen. And before we get into uh, the Word this morning, I just want to say something about prayer. We have been talking about pray, prayer and praying. A lot of people have a misconception about prayer. They believe if we can get enough people begging God to answer us, maybe He will. And that's a lot of the way a lot of people think. That's totally not it. You don't have to beg God because God wants you well more than you want you well. And uh, well, well, when we pray, we have to understand that faith is a force. And when we come together in agreement on, on a matter, that force gets more forceful. Amen? And as Cheryl talked about knocking a mountain down, and as we continue with that force, that mountain begins to crumble. Amen? Amen. And uh, that's what we have to remember when we're praying. You know, the prayer of faith. And uh, it's not begging God, but God has set up a principle, uh, a, a spiritual law, if you will. And if we will uh, uh, operate in that spiritual law, then we see the manifestation of God's power in those situations. So don't ever give up. Amen? Amen. There's things I have thought, you know, uh, healing... Lord, I'm not going to go name them all off. I've talked about these many times. But, you know, if I would have just gave up the first week or month or even six months sometimes. But I just never give up. Amen? And uh, there's been some things that I should not have been healed of, but I was because not only I, but other people praying with me and for me just kept applying that spiritual force. And we broke through those things. So don't give up. Amen? If there's something in your life, don't give up. Just keep standing on the promises of God and on that solid rock. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, I hope some of you may remember to bring your Bible today because we do not have a, uh, a projector to put the words up. Uh, we don't have a screen to put them on. But uh, if you did not, I'm going to read very deliberately so that you can visualize what I'm reading. Okay? Okay. Well, so, uh, today we're going to talk about the subject of building a strong foundation. And I will admit what I'm talking about here the next several weeks is very elementary. But many times we need to go back and, and, uh, to the elementary things and make sure we got a hold of them. Because let me tell you, today these things are not so elementary even though they are. There's so many people going off in the wrong direction on fundamental teachings of the Word of God. And that's why we need to make sure we are firm and established in these areas. So I want to start off with Jude 20 today. And it reads in Jude 20, But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father, again, I just ask that you would clear our minds. I ask, Lord, that you would open our hearts to receive exactly what you have for each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now we have to understand here in Jude, the writer had been talking about unspiritual men previously. He had been talking about natural men. Men who do not have the Holy Spirit. But here he directs his attention to the believer. He says, but you. I've been talking about these folks, but now I'm talking to you. He says, I want you to listen to what I'm about to say. This is for you. First, let's take a look at what we're building on. It tells us that we're building on your most holy faith. Now, it's not so much our faith that we're building on, but it is rather whom we are placing our faith in. We are placing our faith in Jesus Christ, amen, and what He did for us to obtain salvation for each and every one of us. Our faith in Him, that is our foundation. That's our firm foundation. If your faith is placed anywhere else, Sooner or later, your faith will come crumbling down if it's not placed in Jesus Christ. 
In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 11. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 11. It reads there, For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. The solid foundation. Jesus Christ is our solid foundation. Can somebody just say amen? Amen. amen. There is no other solid foundation. All other foundations are, are, are quicksand. You're going to sink. But you can stand firm on the foundation of Jesus Christ. So again, he says, but you, you spiritual man, you believer, Building yourself up. How do we do that? First, we have to understand we're under construction. Look, look to your neighbor and say, you're under construction. <laughs> Not only are you under construction, but you are also the builder. You're the contractor. And you supply the materials that you build on this foundation. That's the good news. We're told to build our spiritual lives based on our faith in God. And there are two major materials that we can build on this foundation with. The Word of God, it says, and praying in the Holy Spirit. Those are the two materials that we bring with us. Now the Word of God strengthens our faith. In Romans 10, 17, you're familiar with this verse of Scripture. It says, so then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So if you ever feel like you lack in faith, what is the solution? Study. study the Word of God. Matter of fact, in, in Timothy, it's a study to show yourselves approved unto God, workmen that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. So if we feel like we're lacking in faith, you know, the first thing we need to do is get in the Word of God and get the Word of God in us. So it goes on to say, uh, 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 again, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Faith ensures us that we're using quality materials when we build on this foundation. If we build upon it with faith, we can know that we have quality materials. And knowing and understanding the Word of God is imperative. The Word of God will prevent you from being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Matter of fact, let me just read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14 to you. And this is a very, very, very important verse of Scripture that we need to look at this morning. Then we will no longer be infants. You know, there's a lot of people who have been believers for 20 and more years that are still infants, still babies in Christ, never really grown. He goes on to say, tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their disposition. Deceitful scheming. We are living in a time where there are more and more teachers that are de emphasizing the importance of the Word of God. And that's going to be our subject next week the Word of God. And I, I feel compelled. I've told Cheryl probably five times in the last week, it is just burning in my spirit because there are so many that are. are, are, are that, that, are, that were once evangelical, conservative Christians that have gotten into error saying the Word of God is not all that important. <clears throat> and I, I, I'd be careful because i got so many things I just want to talk about I could just throw them all out right now. But I'm trying, to, I'm trying to stay in order here. But we are living in a time where the Word of God is de-emphasized. Therefore, we must remain diligent in emphasizing the power of the Word of God, the truth of the Word of God, and that the Word of God is without error. And there's so many ways, you know, I could spend a month or two just talking about the, the, the facts of the Word of God to prove that it stands. Amen. Yeah. But you see, when people want to emphasize what they believe more than the Word of God, they begin to de-emphasize what the Word of God says. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to get into a scriptural battle. That's They think that's foolish. No, I tell you, if, if I'm going to discuss beliefs with you and your beliefs are not based on the Word of God, I, I tell you, I'm not, going to, I'm not going to debate with you. I'm not. I'm not going to debate with you because you have to have a foundation. Yeah. Yeah. 
you know, otherwise it's just your opinion and my opinion. We can argue all day long about That's opinions. Right. That's right. But when we say, what saith the Word of God, and we both have a heart for God, we can come to a conclusion on that. You know, there's nothing wrong with debating when this is done with the right motive that we might learn. Amen? Yeah. You know, if, if I'm debating just to prove my point, well, that's not a good debate. But if, and I don't even know if the word debate's the right word or not. Discuss, maybe. But, you know, if I'm discussing my, my view and your view, that we can, we can learn from each other. Amen? And we can see where, you know, there's been times in my life where I had to go back, oh, you know, I was wrong there. Because mm -hmm. maybe I was listening to somebody else rather than really getting a personal revelation from the Word of God. And I've had to go back to people and say, you know, hey, you know, I, I kind of missed it in this area and I just wanted to, to let you know that. That's why, you know, you need to check everything I say with the Word of God. Amen? I mean, I hope you have a level of trust in what I say and, and, and you, you can know that I definitely pray and study before I deliver that Word to you but my word's not law, his is. Amen? That's right. Okay. Now, he also mentions prayer, specifically praying in the Holy Spirit. Now, it's important that we consistently and correctly uh, pray. It's so, prayer is so important. It goes hand in hand with the Word of God. We need the assistance of the Holy Spirit in both. Amen? You know, it's, it's His leading, His directing. We must allow the Holy Spirit to control. We must allow the Holy Spirit to lead us as to when and how to pray. To pray in the Holy Spirit does not necessarily mean to pray in tongues. However, tongues are a great tool to have when you don't know how to pray. That's true. <clears throat> We're to pray in unity with the Holy Spirit, guided by the Holy Spirit. That's, that's what's important. In order to build these spiritual houses, this foundation, on, on this foundation of Jesus Christ, we, we have to have a consistent prayer life and a consistent time in God's Word. Now I'm going to go back to 1 Corinthians 3. I'm going to read verses 11 through 15. It says, For no other foundation... Can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ? So is that, has that been established? He is the foundation on the solid rock I stand. And I'll tell you, church, that's why I, I, I wanted, this, uh, I wanted this, this song that we sang. The solid rock. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, it doesn't matter how good it sounds, amen, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, listen, all other ground is sinking sand. Amen? Amen. And that is so true. And that is, that is so important that we understand that Jesus is the foundation. Jesus is the way, not a way. And there's so many people today saying that, uh, you know, all these other, uh, you know, that everybody, well, I don't know. last week we talked about the new birth, the ultimate new beginning, amen? And, and when we talk about the new birth, we have to understand, as we talked a little bit about last week, that Jesus died for us all. But that doesn't mean we all go to heaven. And that's another uh, uh, teaching that's gaining much popularity today. That, you know, He paid the price for all of our sin, we're all going to heaven. No, there's one little slight detail they're missing that is in the Word of God, and that is we must receive Jesus Christ personally as our Lord and Savior. <clears throat> for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son so that whosoever would believe would not perish but have everlasting life. For he who believes is not condemned, but he who believes not is condemned already because he has not believed on the only begotten name of the Son of God. And I can go, as many as received him, Jesus, to them he gave the right to be called children of God, even to those that believe on his name. Amen. Whosoever name was not written in the Lamb's book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Yes, El's real too. That's another popular teaching that, that people want to uh, 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 
So, you know, hell's not real. Or nobody's going to hell. I tell you, church, we're living in that time where people are giving heed to what tickles their ears. Do I like it that there's a hell? No, I don't. But do I like it that Jesus Christ came and died and paid the price for my sin? That I might not have to go there? Yes, I do. Yes, man. That is good news. Yes. Ignoring it is not good news. Because if people believe you don't have to accept Jesus and receive Jesus, oh, they might think they're on their way to heaven, but there's going to come a terrible awakening one day when they realize that they have been deceived. Like I said, this has been weighing on me. And I want us to understand, and I want us to go out and help other people understand that there is life, eternal life, in Christ. And He is our firm foundation. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation, now it tells us how we can build on the foundation, with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work <clears throat> will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Now, in what I just read to you, there are six different types of materials in two different categories. First category, you have gold, silver, and precious stones. In the second category, you have wood, hay, and straw or stone. So we have two categories, six different types of materials. Now the major difference in the two categories is the first group withstands fire, and the second group does not withstand fire. Amen? Now the reason this makes a difference is revealed back in verse 13. It says it will be revealed by fire. What you have built on it, whether it's, whether it's gold, silver, precious stones, or wood, hay, and straw, that's going to be revealed by fire. The first three withstand fire. The last three do not withstand fire. So he's talking about our works and how we build on this foundation. You know, we're not saved by our works, but we work because we're saved. It tells us we're created for good works. Amen? So he's talking about our works and what sort they are. And our works are really determined by our motives for doing those works. Why do we give to God's kingdom, to the church? Why, why do we do that? Why do you attend church? Why, why are you here? Why do you teach children's church? Why do you drive a church van? Why do you clean the church? Why, you know, I mean, I can go through every type of, of, of work that goes on in the church and outside the church. But the, the point is, why do you do it? Do you do it for man's approval? Do you do it uh, for praise? Well, if you do, you've already received your reward. I mean, that's fine. But you get praise of man. If that's why you're doing it, now, now don't get me wrong, it's okay to praise somebody for doing a job well done. Oh, don't say anything to me. Don't praise me. I don't want to lose my reward. No. It's not what's going on in the action. It's what's going on in the heart. What's your motivation for what you do? Yeah. That's what really counts. You know, like sometimes, you know, people are, well, I fasted for two days, but don't tell anybody. It's okay for people to know you fast. That may encourage them to pray and fast. Amen? But if you're doing, okay, well, I fasted two weeks, buddy. Look at me. I'm the man. You say, that's the wrong motive. But, you know, you don't have to be awful. We do that. Nobody knows anybody's praying and fasting. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's true. Or if you go up to somebody and say, hey, I just want to let you know I've been praying for you. Why did you say that to them so you can look spiritual like I'm praying for you? Or is just to encourage them from your heart, a pure motive. I've been proud of what you know you've been praying for. You see, it's the motive. I hope that made sense. It goes on to say, again, if you're doing it for man's approval or praise, you've already received your reward. And on that day, that work, whatever it may have been, 
will be considered wood, hay, or straw. I mean, wood, uh, wood, hay, yeah, wood, hay, or straw. And it will be utterly burned up, leaving you in a pile of ashes. You will indeed suffer loss, but you will be saved because of the foundation that you're standing on. Amen. The firm foundation. Your faith in Christ for salvation. On the other hand, if your works are motivated by your love for Christ and uh, because you want to make a difference in eternity, your works will stand and you shall receive re a reward for those works. You know, the works that we do here and now are an investment plan for eternity. Life here on earth. Now here, here's really the key. Here's the point. Life here on earth is to be preparation for heaven. Not a lot of Christians look at it that way. You know, it's all about now. But church, this life is so short compared to eternity that we need to take this short amount of time and prepare for eternity. And that doesn't mean just make sure you're saved. It means get prepared for your new home. Get prepared for, for that new place. It says that we're pilgrims here. We're, we're just traveling through this land. We're, we're strangers here. We're, we're aliens here. This is not our citizenship is of heaven, not of this earth. But do we really live that way? Do we really uh, uh, pursue that with all of our hearts and minds? Or is that just words in a book that we don't really pay attention to? The better prepared, I believe, the greater responsibility we will have on the other side. You know, we're not always going to be sitting by the seashore throwing seashells. Amen? We're going to have responsibilities in heaven. And the greater prepared we are, the greater responsibility, I believe, we'll have when we get there. So I want to encourage you to examine your heart and ask yourself, First of all, am I doing anything for the kingdom? I mean, it's an honest question, not to draw condemnation, but just a self-examination. And, and you know, it doesn't mean, well, I don't teach or I don't do this. You know, just raising your kids in a godly manner can be doing something for the kingdom of God. That's Amen. true. I mean, a housewife can be doing everything God called her to do by raising her family in a godly way. Amen. So it's not all about, are you teaching a class or... Are you on the intercessory prayer team? Or are you this? Or are you that? It's not always a way of looking spiritual things. It could be just the common everyday things that you do that could be your calling. But just ask God, what's my calling? What is it you want me to do? And do it. And you'll be rewarded for that. Amen? Amen. Appraise your motive. If you're doing what you're doing, are you doing them for the right motives? Amen? Am I doing anything? Then ask, why am I doing it? And if you're doing it for the wrong reasons, change it. Amen? Have a talk with your heart. Heart? <laughs> you know, David says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. If your heart's not doing right, say, Heart, you need to make some changes. Soul, you need to make some changes. Motive, you need to change. And you can do that. Mm -hmm. It might even be a fight. Have you ever had a fight like that? Like you caught yourself doing something with wrong? And you think, oh, I don't want to do it for that reason. And just ask God to forgive you and say, Lord, I want to have a pure heart in this. I want to have pure mm -hmm. motives in this. If the Holy Spirit will help you. Mm -hmm. Another important reason to build with a solid quality materials on this foundation is because God uses all of us, our individual buildings. See, we're all building, right, on the foundation. But God takes all of our buildings or otherwise called temples. Know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? He uses all of these temples as a habitation. You see, as we come together, we're all bringing our buildings with us. Amen? We're all building personally on that foundation, which is Jesus Christ. And we all come together here as a local church. 
and, and we're, we're combining our buildings that he might come and habitate at Crosswalk Fellowship, which basically is this family, and he habitates within us and, and, and is building us together with, with another body, local body, and we all come together in different ways. Amen? Amen. Amen. In Ephesians 2.22, listen to what it says. In whom also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. So as we join together in the unity of the Spirit, God dwells among us. And I, I know sometimes it's hard to see this, but He's here. Yeah. We sometimes got to get past the natural to see the supernatural. Amen? We are built together. That speaks of unity. And I thank God for unity. I see far too many churches that do not have unity. It's, it's a terrible thing. Together we're the bride of Christ. We're the church. And we are a local church. But the church and the church is most visibly seen in the local church. Now I've heard people arrogantly say, I don't need to go to local. I don't need to go to a church because I am part of the church. But how's anybody going to see the church without seeing a local church? They may see an individual, but we have to come together as a body in order to allow people to know we're His disciples because of our love one for another. Amen? Amen. In the local church, unity is manifested. In the local church, corporate worship is manifested. Service is manifested. Prayer is manifested. You know, it's great to be a lone ranger out there somewhere saying, I'm part of the church. But, you know, what part of that church is, is having loving children's church workers and teachers love on your kids and teach your kids? Amen. <clears throat> That's where the manifestation of the church comes in at. <clears throat> or where you could be going through a hard time and say, would, would you pray for me? And, and of course, here you don't even have to ask a lot of times, amen, we'll just let's pray for you. But I guarantee if you ask for prayer, you're going to get prayer, amen? Amen. Very quickly. It's awesome. That's part of the manifestation in the local church. Individual spiritual growth is manifested in the church. I love looking out and seeing how some of you have grown so much since I've known you. Amen? That's why I love the local church. That's why I love my church family. Are we perfect? No, none of us are perfect. But what family is? Amen? But we love one another and we're here for one another and I love that about the local church and our church. In closing, how do we build on this foundation. Again, this is very elementary, but there's so many folks out there and you're going to run into them. I guarantee it. We must accept Christ as our Savior so that He might become our sure foundation. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we must confess Him publicly because when we do so, it will strengthen our relationship with Him. You know, I don't know. I don't think there's any such thing as secret Christians. There might be underground Christians where they're hiding so they don't get their heads cut off, but they're not secret with one another. Amen. And that will strengthen our building, our temple. And we're to begin to labor for Him with a labor of love, not out of trying to. Prove ourselves or anything of that nature, but just because we love Him. And we want to go out to His field and go out and build His kingdom with pure motives. And then lastly, we're to hook up and join together to assemble with people of like faith to honor Him, worship Him, learn of Him, and serve Him. Amen? Yeah. That, my friend, is a sure foundation. And that's what we're building on. Jesus Christ and His righteousness. We're thankful for His blood that was shed for us. 
you know, in the past there's been times where, I'll be honest with you, I just felt like hanging it up. You know, just not, not recently or, you know, but I mean, over, I've been doing this for over 30 years. So, you know, there's been a lot of times it was every Monday morning. <laughs> you know, it was like, I just like to go do something regular and show like, yeah, I'm all for that. <clears throat> but then I realized how many people are not preaching the truth. And although, you know, I may not have a, a grand stand, I can at least influence a few people with the truth. Amen. And the, the, you know, I know this is not great revelation. You know, I mean, sometimes, but you know, sometimes that's the problem. People are trying to come up with new revelation and they got to make it up. It's okay just to stick with God's basics. Amen. His truth. And we need to get that down. And uh, we need to be firm in it. Do you know who most Jehovah Witnesses are? Former Baptists, former Methodists, former believers that weren't grounded in the Word of God. So they believed a lie. But now it's not just naming Jehovah Witnesses or Mormons or whoever it may be that have are, are in, in error, erroneous doctrine, if you will. But now it's that non-denominational church over there that's come up with we're all going to heaven because he died for all of us. There is no hell. That's just people trying to scare you. But how many times did Jesus talk about hell? I tell you, I think it was like 400 and something. And then if we talk about hell, it's like we're trying to glorify hell or something. No, I hate the fact that there's a hell. But I love the fact that Jesus came and died on a cross and paid the price for our sin that we would not have to go there. Amen? Amen. Yeah. You bow your heads with me. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for your word that we can stand upon the promises that are written therein. We thank you most of all, Lord, that it's written in your word that Jesus Christ came and died upon a cross to pay the price for our sin. <clears throat> and if we will receive him and that gift of salvation that we will receive the gift of life, eternal life. And we just thank you so much for that. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm just going to ask you this question. I know we're home folk today, but at the same time, I want to make sure you have this opportunity. If you cannot confidently say, I have received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I said this last week. If you can't think of a specific time that you've asked Jesus to come into your heart and your life, odds are you have not received Christ. I don't mean an exact date or time, but a time that you can recall. I want to give you an opportunity this morning to make that decision. I want to pray with you that you can walk out of here knowing that you have a relationship with Jesus. That's the most important decision you can make. I'll be probably preaching a funeral this week. You know, once you breathe that last breath, that's your last opportunity. Are you trying to scare me, Pastor? No, I'm just speaking what's reality. Don't put off until tomorrow. Make that decision today. If you'd like to know that you are a Christian, a born-again believer, a child of God. I want you to lift your hand right now and pray with you. Would be anybody this morning? Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you that I'm, I believe I'm in a room full of believers. But Lord, if there would be one that is not sure, I pray, God, that they would make sure with you, Lord. 
And we can walk out of here with confidence knowing that we are not walking in our own righteousness, but the righteousness of Christ because we've received that gift of righteousness. And Lord, I just, uh, again, ask that you would uh, help us to gain greater understanding of your truth and your word, that we might be able to help others that have been led in error, Lord. And we're just careful to give you all the praise and all the glory for what you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said? Amen. 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 God bless you. And if you're